Do you want an awesome research methods chapter for your research project or your dissertation? Of course you do! Having written my own dissertations for undergraduate, postgraduate, my PhD thesis, and supervised quite possibly thousands as well, I think I'm in quite a good place to share with you lots of tips and tricks on how you can write an awesome research methods chapter and get the best grades. So stay tuned, watch this video right through till the end, and I'm sure you are well on your way to getting that top mark. And if you are new here, my name is Dr. Hayley Stainton, and I have lots of other videos all about writing your dissertation or your research project, so do make sure you subscribe for more. Many students sigh when they hear the term research methods. They think it's dull, it's boring, it's difficult. Well, perhaps I am a bit of a strange human being, but I actually really like research methods, and it can be quite interesting. But regardless of whether you enjoy research methods or not, your research methods chapter, or your methodology chapter as it's sometimes referred to, is a fundamental part of your research project. Essentially, this is your chance to demonstrate that your research is credible, that people should actually listen to what you have to say at the end. You need to demonstrate here that your data collection method is in fact valid, and you haven't just made the whole thing up. So, I have some top tips for you, and follow these, and I'm sure you'll do well. So let's start off with the first one. Start by discussing the broad philosophical approaches of your research. Okay, I know that sounds complicated, but I promise you it really isn't. Your research methods chapter ideally wants to start broad, focusing in on the more specific details as you go through. An ideal way to use this is to use the research onion approach. And I have actually made a pretty detailed video on that, so uh, if you're not sure what the research onion is, take a, take a look. But to summarise for the purpose of this video, to begin you should outline your philosophical approaches that you are taking towards your research, i.e. will your research be aligned with the scientific approach of things being black and white or true or false, that tends to sit with quantitative research, or will it take a more social approach, taking into considerations aspects such as how and why. This is generally aligned with a qualitative approach. This part of the research methods chapter can sound quite complicated and it can even put students off attempting to address it, but the truth is that it really doesn't need to be. I'll let you in on a little secret. Academics often just love to make things sound more complicated than they need to be. I recommend that you invest some time to read some of the research methods texts. Trust me, they might not be the most interesting bedtime reading you've ever undertaken, but it will help you to write your research methods chapter and, most importantly, to get those better grades. Tip number two is to discuss your choice of research approach, which is usually qualitative or quantitative or both. So in your research methods chapter, you need to have a detailed section about whether your research is qualitative or quantitative, or both, and why, underpinned most importantly with academic references. Quantitative research tends to focus on numbers, and it is often undertaken in the form of data collected through surveys. This approach is popular amongst scientists, and it's great for proving and disproving things. It's beneficial because it can allow you to collect large amounts of data, in turn making your research more valid and quantifiable. It is limited in that it does not account for aspects such as why or how. Qualitative research, on the other hand, is all about the whys and the hows. Generally associated with words rather than numbers, qualitative data collection tends to provide a smaller sample size than quantitative research which is actually one of the limitations. However, the data that it does yield is generally rich and meaningful. Qualitative research is great at providing understanding of social situations that are not easily measured using quantitative means. And there are lots of ways that we can collect data through a qualitative approach. This might include interviews, focus groups, observations, 
and one of my favourites, netnography, which is essentially a method of analysing data that you find on the internet. Some researchers will choose to use both a combination of qualitative and quantitative, which is known as mixed methods. Generally, the justifications for using both approaches is so that the limitations of one can be offset by the other. So for example, a survey might not provide detailed explanations, but it does provide a large sample size. So it is followed with interviews which can provide those details, albeit only from a small sample. And whichever approach you do use, you need to write about it in detail in your methodology chapter and you need to justify it with academic references. So say, it's good because, it's bad because, reference, reference, reference. And I will actually put some really handy references down in the description for you. So if you're not sure where to look for those references, I've got you covered. Tip number three is to analyze your chosen research method. So once you have explained your choice of qualitative or quantitative research, with the references, you need to focus on the specific research methods that you tend to employ. So you should begin by explaining the research method broadly. For example, if you are doing interviews, you will explain whether these are going to be structured or semi-structured, where they will be undertaken and why, how long they will be and why, etc. If you're doing surveys, you will likely discuss whether these will be paper-based or online surveys. What types of questions will you be including? Will they be closed questions, scaled questions, etc.? And what platform will you be using to design them? Word, Google Forms, SurveyMonkey? In this section of your research methods chapter, you need to explicitly describe the details of your chosen method of data collection. You also need to discuss the benefits and the limitations, which must be supported by the academic references. I told you that those books will come in really handy. And just let me give you a little bit of advice here. Don't be afraid to talk about the limitations. No one research method is going to be perfect. And it's really important that you do acknowledge that. And you say, I know this isn't great. So for example, I know that by doing interviews, I am not going to be able to interview loads and loads of people because it's not feasible. I haven't got enough time but I've decided that's okay because the data I do get is going to be so rich and so detailed. Those are the kinds of things that you want to say and support them with the references. And lastly, you do need to think about what you are going to do with the data once you have it. And this is a part that lots of students forget about when they write their research methods chapter. You should provide an explanation of analysis techniques and any software that you plan to use. So for example, Envivo is a popular program that people use to analyze and organize qualitative research. And if you're doing quantitative data, you might have statistics and tests that you want to run using SPSS, for example. Tip number four is to be critical about your sampling techniques. So the next thing that you need to cover in your research methods chapter is sampling. In other words, who are you collecting data from? In this section, you need to clearly explain and justify who your research respondents will be and why. Let's say, for example, I'm doing a project on noise pollution and how this impacts residents near the airport. I would need to describe which residents I will be using as my respondents and why. Maybe I choose to select people who live within five miles from the airport I'm studying. I would need to explain why I think this is appropriate. Let's say I plan on doing interviews with these respondents. I would need to say how many interviews would be appropriate and why. And of course, all of this does need to be supported with, you guessed it, academic references. So there are in fact different sampling strategies that are available to you as a researcher. And it is your job to identify which is the most appropriate. Talk about it and talk about the benefits and limitations of it with references. So let's say for argument's sake, I decide to knock on the doors of residents on a particular street because it is close to the airport. Many students would make the mistake of claiming that this is random sampling but it is not 
random at all. And actually, this is a mistake that I see all the time. For sampling to be random, there actually must be an equal chance of each possible respondent being selected. I.e., every person who lives within a five mile radius of Heathrow has a chance of being selected for the research. But if I am only asking people along one street, then that's not going to happen, is it? So it's not random. Instead, this would be an example of non-probability sampling. In other words, non-random. This could be seen as an example of convenience sampling because it's convenient to me, the researcher. There's a lot of literature around convenience sampling and so if I was writing about this in my methodology, I would need to consult this literature and reference it. And in this section, I would talk about the benefits and the limitations of using respondents from this particular street. And the fifth tip is that you need to be an ethical researcher. Now ethics is something that a lot of us didn't think about so much years ago, but it is really, really in the limelight lately. So it's really important that your research is ethical and you might even be asked to complete some kind of ethics form or get ethical approval from your university or your college. This is to ensure that you are complying with relevant university regulations, that your research is fair and just. So, in your research methods chapter, you should provide a paragraph or so stating why ethical research is important, with the references, of course, and detail how your research is indeed ethical. Things that you should do to ensure your research is ethical include storing data in a secure place, making sure that people's names, etc. are kept hidden, confidentiality, or changing the names of respondents, getting informed consent, in other words, the respondents are agreeing to take part in the research and not addressing any topics or issues that might be deemed unfair, illegal, discriminatory, etc. And tip number six is don't be afraid to be critical. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is that you critically review everything all the way through. Don't just say, I'm going to do interviews because I think it's a good idea. Talk about why it might not be great, but why it works for you. Have lots of references, cross-reference. If you're not sure how to do that, I have a video on referencing. Do check that one out. But make sure you have lots of literature, lots of critical arguments, and that is how you are going to get those good grades. And as I have said before, my tip number seven is reference, reference, reference. A lot of people think the references are pretty much limited to your literature review, but that is not true. You should have almost as many references throughout your methodology, or maybe not as many, but reference as often as you do in your literature review, because I can guarantee it, whichever research method, whichever sample you choose to use will be covered in the research methods text. So do take a look at that list I've put down in the description. I'm sure you will find some of those really helpful. So all in all, you should now know how to write that awesome research methods chapter. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to answer them and to help you where I can. And I also have lots of other videos because this video is actually just one in a series of several research methods videos. So do check those out too, to write a, an awesome dissertation or research project from start to finish. <laughs>